zona en aire que no es un poquito el pica se dice no, es un multiplan pota signal according to Sir Ote Victor Torres the history of the are you not? are you? Pananaw at opinyon ng pag-uulat na mag-uulat sa programang ito ay hindi ang pangunahing posisyon o pahayag ng organisasyong ito. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sunday edition of the One Inclusion Live Weekend. We are broadcasting live on Inclu Radio and on the Inclu Radio Facebook page and to be uploaded later on the YouTube channel of the Inclusion Network. I'm your host, Carlos Miguel Tanahashi. And before we start the show, we will have the recitation of the Horatio Imperata against COVID-19. To our fellow H&I members and everyone, here now is Leorashi Imperata against COVID-19. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We plight your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Brock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Caluso, pray for us. Amen. And this afternoon, we will be discussing about something, something interesting for you guys. Hear this. This afternoon, I'll be discussing about the history of De La Salle College of St. Benilde, Manila, and Antipolo, and what are the significant events on it. This reason why I picked this topic, guys, is this is because of the celebration of the Feast of St. Benilde Romanson this coming Thursday, August 13. Okay? Without further ado, let us discuss now the history. Let's start from the 1980s era. How did De La Salle College of St. Benilde start it? In 1980, Dallas Hall University, under the administration of Brother Andrew Gonzalez FSC, established the Career Development Program. This is a night school for working professionals. So in case if you're busy, then you need to go to the CDP of Dallas Hall University. You need to. At the time, they went there. Five years later, in 1985, on top of night classes, Community College, Dallas Hall University, started offering pre-baccalaureate programs to students with competencies for collegiate studies. In 1988, Dallas Hall University, College of St. Benilde, was founded. And in 1989, Dallas Hall University, College of St. Benilde moved from Dallas Hall University to its own campus at 2544 Taft Avenue, Malate, Manila. 
Its general education curriculum became part of the college arts and business studies area, which is called today as the School of Multidisciplinary Studies. What happened in the 1990s in Benin? In 1991, the college introduced bookkeeping and accounting vocational programs for the deaf. Ten years later, the programs were re-established and it became known as the SDAS, the School of Deaf Education and Applied Studies, one of the only six institutions in the country that offers post-secondary education to the deaf. So what does this mean? This means that... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, um, Delsa College of St. Winnegut is a very inclusive educational institution. Okay. In 1993, the college started conducting its own admissions process. In 1994, the LaSalle University College of St. Winnegut was declared autonomous, okay, or therefore it has rather been separated from De La Salle University, Manila. In 1995, the School of Design and Arts opened with the Bachelor of Science of Industrial Design as its first degree program. In 1996, if you guys are interested to cook food or if you want to bake or if you want to own a restaurant, then it launched the School of Hotel, Restaurant, and Institution Management or SHRIM. In 1997, the college held its first commencement exercises independent of De La Salle University, Manila. In 1998, the year that we celebrated the centennial of our independence, and we entered the sports industry in that institution, De La Salle University College of St. Minier became a member of the National Collegiate Athletic Association or the NCAA. In 1999, the second campus Open. They inaugurated the Angelo King International Center located in the streets of Arellano and Estrada, located in Malate, Manila. That is the second campus housed the, C the College of St. Minin Hotel International Conference Center. There, it was a school and it added a hotel. It's very interesting, guys. This one, Akik. Or the, if you want to cook, do na, na lahat, magluluto, mag-aro na magluto, or mag-aro ng pagtatayo ng restaurant, or kung gusto mo magluto, gusto mo kumain sa mga restaurants ng hotel, ng CSB Hotel, then doon ka sa akin. Okay? Noong 2000s, ang bagong milenyo. Noong 2000s, an established na po ang School of Management and Information Technology or SMIT. Mas kilala natin ngayon. Okay. Among degree programs ay pinokos sa Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. They also offered the Information Management degree program. Benil brought home the Men's Basketball Championship of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Benil offered the Bachelor of Arts in Music Production degree program. And then, the LRC extension at the ground floor of the Taft campus was open and the Young Hoteliers Exposition was founded. Yung Bachelor of Arts in Music Production ay hawak po ng School of Design and Arts. Yeah. Noong 2003, ang Solomon Guest House ay binuksan na sa publiko. Okay, at, at may isang taong internet, it's a very interesting to know that at that time, from 2003, the president was a woman. Her name is Dr. Carmelita Quevenco. She is the first female president of De La Salle University College of St. Daniel. In 2004, what happened? In preparation for the establishment of De La Salle Philippines in 2006, it is the governing body of the of the 16 or 17 Lasallian district schools throughout Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, the college dropped the word university, and it became known today as De La Salle College of St. Minyot. That name was used till in its present day. The School of Professional and Continuing Education was founded. They offered college graduates post-baccalaureate diploma courses in various fields. 
in 2007, that's the year that this is in history of Benil, the Lasalle College of St. Benil inaugurated the third campus, the School of Design and Arts, located in Vito Cruz or P. Ocampo Street. In 2008, the United in Faith Partners in Nation Building was held in Benil with its speaker, former president of Timor-Leste or East Timor, Jose Ramos Horta. He was the first foreign head of state to visit Benil under the leadership of former president, Brother Victor Franco, FSC. What happened in the Decada 2010s? In 2011, the De La Salle College of St. Benil launched the Brother Miguel Febres Cordero Building. This is the home to the offices that provide support services to students. This includes the artists, the student organization and publication, community development offices. It was used to be the, the this building used to be before it became known as the Brother Miguel Febres Cordero. So Brother Miguel Febres Cordero is a Spanish priest who is also advocating also for inclusion. That's why my name, that's why it said Carlos Miguel. That's why, I, I, my name, the reason why my, my name is Miguel there is because this is of my dream of going to La Salle for college. Okay. St. Jaime Hilario Center was also established. They empowered persons with disabilities by providing computer applications, training, and employment assistance. And in that year, in the celebration of the centennial of St. La Salle, they had premiered a movie called Frerel, the movie about the life of St. John Baptist in the South. It is a production of Toon Bro. It's under the supervision of the School of Design and Arts. Okay. In 2013, the La Salle College of St. Vignette celebrated its 25 years of quality education. It also premiered its first animated feature produced by Toon Bro Animated Studio. Toon Bro was established for young animators and it mostly focused on the students who are taking up multimedia arts and animation. Mana, the film directed by Gabriel Fernandez, the chairperson of the production design program, premiered before brother Victor Franco ended his term as a president. He, he turned over to the lead on this leadership to a tech-savvy president named Brother Dennis Magbanwa, FSC, who is now currently now in Hong Kong, in Lasalle, Hong Kong. He left Benin last year. He transferred to Hong Kong already. Broden. Si Broden, yung dating president ng Benin. In 2014, the College of St. Benin Hotel reopened as the Hotel Benin a newly enhanced Italian brand of service. Andrew Cafe, a gourmet restaurant at the Miguel Febres Cordero grounds in the Taft campus also opened. Benilde launched the Think Inclusivity and Innovation Program. Okay, 2014. Okay. In 2015, Benilde launched the Brothers House Program for Associates. Robert Tang was installed as the new Chancellor of Benilde. Renewgens were among the Filipino Sign Language interpreters for the visit of Pope Francis to the country and the papal entourage for the 2015 apostolic visit of Pope Francis to the Philippines stayed at the Hotel Benil. The college started offering the real estate management degree program, which I remain when that's my course as of this time. In 2015, Benilde already shifted the academic calendar to August. Why? This is to prevent the May opening of classes because that month is susceptible to the suspension of classes and this is in accordance with the internationalization of the academic calendar for colleges and universities, not only in the Philippines but also overseas. In 2016, SNIP was granted the Center of Excellence in Business Administration by the Commission on Higher Education. SRIM was granted COE by, in Hotel and Restaurant Management by CHED. The, eight, the Human Resource Management Program. 
is granted level 4 accreditation by the PAASCO. The HRM, EM, and CA were granted level 3 reaccreditation by the PAASCO. The IHM program of SHRIM was granted level 1 accreditation by the PAASCO. And the launch of Big Sky. Big Sky is para, para siyang Edmodo, Google Classroom, pero mood, parang model yung Big Sky. Pakita ko sa inyo guys. To. Ito ha? Ito ang Big Sky. Ito ay under ng si Under. Ito yung Big Sky. Oh. Ito yung itsura niya. Oh. Ito yun. Inunch na yun noong 2016 yun. In 2017, what happened? Binyod was accredited as an Apple Distinguished School. Kitchen City Express under Artemis Plus took over the cafeteria services in the TAF and SDA campus. The TAF campus cafeteria was reopened last May 2017. The SDA campus cafeteria was followed a month later on June 2017. This means that the previous cafeterias concessionaires like All Round, Figaro, Greenwich, Koi, and the list goes on were already been gone. They were replaced by Kitchen CT under Artemis Plus. Okay. In 2018, what happened? Benyot celebrated its 30th anniversary. So in view of this, Benyot Antipolo, an integration of Benyot Manila and the college level of La Salle Antipolo, opened in time for academic year 2018 to 2019. Benyot Manila opened the BDS, the Benyot Deaf School. For IB 118, Implementation of the new general education curriculum and the revised undergraduate program curricula in connection with the implementation of the K-12 senior high school program. Service learning is integrated in the curriculum. Okay. In 2019, there was a change of leadership again last year. But before that, the institutional policy on social development was approved. Brother Dennis Magbanoa stepped down after six years of leadership. He was being handed over to the new president, Brother Edmundo Dodo Fernandez, FSC. He's also the president of La Salle Green Hills, by the way. And then recently, last year, this year, the launch of the Benil Online Learning Term from 2019 to 2020 and VBE, Virtual Benil. For first term 2020 to 2021, this is due to the suspension of classes since March 9, 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the declaration of the state of public health emergency, and COVID-19 was declared as a pandemic by the World Health Organization and the implementation of a community quarantine in the Philippines. That's why we're, we're, we're the first in our country to do this virtually. Benyield is the first school in the Philippines that pioneers online learning. Diba? Because it, it, that's why with the ongoing implementation of a community quarantine, it is unsure or unclear when will the schools in Metro Manila will resume and when will Benyield will resume operations for the next term. Okay? So remember, we do extraordinary things extraordinarily well. Animo Benil. Here now is the playing of the hymn to Saint Benil, found performed by the Coro San Benildo under the direction of the director, Sir Lorenzo Dialogo. Thank you. 
Okay. If you want to learn more, I have a video about the history of Greenland. If you want to know about the history of, of CSV or the college, I have the new video now history of the video. Ipakita ko sa inyo guys. Hold on. Line of the school we all know as De La Salle College of St. Benil. It sees how unique every individual is. What kind of people are we? Why are we so different? Well, long ago, during the American occupation of the Philippines, the American Archbishop of Manila, Jeremiah Hardy, requested for the Lasallian brothers to come to the Philippines. They hesitated, but eventually agreed sending nine brothers to Manila, and in 1911, De La Salle College was established. Then, in 1978, Brother Andrew Gonzalez, FSC, became the president of the De La Salle University. During his time, the vision of Benilde as an educational innovator began. This vision was continued by Brother Rafael Donato, FSC, and focused on the community services that Benilde can do to help the communities in need. So it's no surprise that the school implemented this idea, a career development program made for working professionals. This was located in the St. Benil Hall, now presently called Miguel Hall. It would later be called Community College in 1985. On May of 1987, the Arts and Business Studies area offered the Bachelor of Arts degree in Management, emphasizing human resources management, and a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration, major in Computer Applications. Then, the big name came, Benil, in 1988. Thus it was established, the De La Salle University College of St. Benil. Why Benil? No. Who is Benil? Benil was a 19th century French Lasalle brother from the region of Auvergne. Born 100 years after St. De La Salle died, he was a small man but so extraordinary at being a teacher that he clearly was gifted. He was also innovative in terms of the students he taught. He accommodated all kinds, rich poor, married folk, single folk, young, old, and rowdy children. In fact, he even learned sign language so he could teach a deaf student who eventually received his first communion thanks to Benilde's efforts. What better character of a saint? Who else would teach without question or prejudice or accommodates anyone no matter what? But the students were increasing. They needed a new building. So in 1989, they moved to 2544 Taft Avenue, Manila. It formally opened in August 11. The land where the Taft building is on was owned by LDP Leasing Corporation, connected to the Land Bank of the Philippines. The building, on the other hand, was designed by architects like Rogelio Villarosa and Hines Rivera. That's why the plaza in Taft is called Plaza Villarosa. It also houses the Lord of the Resurrection Sculpture by Napoleon Abueva, national artist for sculpture, the only Boholano to have ever received such a distinction. 1988 was when the college's general education curriculum was absorbed by the business studies area to provide a more cohesive and program-driven education. Eventually, this would be renamed as the School for Multidisciplinary Studies. Then, in 1991, the School of Design and Arts opened with its first degree program, Bachelor of Science in Industrial Design. By far, one of the best things the school would have done, and would definitely have impressed St. Benel himself, 
was introducing vocational programs for the deaf, bookkeeping and accounting, truly embracing all kinds of learners. Ten years later, in 2001, programs would be enhanced and reestablished as the bachelor's degree under the School of Deaf Education and Applied Studies. 1994 would be another big year. The De La Salle University College of St. Benilde was granted autonomy. Oh yes, after a year of the first student admission, Benel became independent from the De La Salle University itself. November of that year saw the ratification of its constitution, rules, laws, and Benilian values. In 1996, Benel saw the need to offer short courses for learners specializing in particular skill sets. Thus, a certificate program center was established. Later, it would be called the School of Professional and Continuing Education. The Grants and Aid was also established on this year. It would later be called the Student Grants Office, whose purpose would remain the same, financially help students study in Benil. This was also the year when the School of Hotel, Restaurant, and Institution Management was born. Grand celebrations were held in Hackney. However, the construction of the building would not start until 1998 and would not be complete until 1999. It formally opened in August of that same year. Near it is the Solomon Guest House located at Ayala Street, where Shrimp students take additional OJTs. This four-star hotel was made possible also due to the efforts of Dr. Andrew King, self-made Chinese billionaire and well-known philanthropist. In 1997, the first graduation rites independent from the Bellasal University were held by Benilde. Benilde went physical on March of 1998. What I mean is, Benilde officially became a member of the National Collegiate Athletic Association, or NCAA. This was during the leadership of Brother Rolando Dixon FSC, and the college has hosted the NCAA twice, first in 2006, then in 2013. In 2006, it won second place overall. In 1999, the multimedia arts program was offered, the first of its kind in the country at that time. In 2000, the Bachelor of Arts in Music Production was offered, again, the first in the country. During this year as well, the bidding for the architect for the ambitious SDA campus construction began. In 2001, Esteas was invited and later became a partner school of the Post-Secondary Education Network International, an international partnership of colleges and universities specializing in educating those with hearing impairment. A name change came again in 2004 as the word university was dropped. Thus, we are now De La Salle, College of St. Benilde, to truly show our independence. It is also interesting to note that from 2003 to 2004, the president was a woman, Dr. Carmelita Quebenco. So far, she is the only woman to have been president. The third campus was finally inaugurated in 2007, during the time of interim president Brother Dodo Fernandez, FSC, the School of Design and Arts campus. Its strange look was made to inspire creativity. According to principal designer Ed Galma, Every space is a design workspace. All the corridors and common areas where students converge can be galleries for displaying students' works. Brother Armin Luiso, FSC and president of the college from 2004 to 2006, described the SDA campus as a jewel in the crown of the De La Salle University System schools. The building's design was indeed revolutionary and one of De La Salle's most ambitious projects. To top off this spectacular year, the courses for animation, digital filmmaking, and photography were offered by the SDA, the first of their kind in the country. At this time also, the happy and accommodating brother Victor Franco FSC became the college's first brother president. Truly, 2007 had so much icing on CSP's cake. Furthermore, our honor was added to when on August 12, 2008, Jose Ramos Jorda, East Timor president, visited Benilde and gave a talk called United in Faith, Partners in Nation Building, during his four-day visit to the Philippines. This was the first time a foreign head of state has visited the college. In 2009, the Bachelor of Science in Information Technology major in Game Design and Development for Smith was established. The first ID program anchored in game design and development in the Philippines. 
In this year, Benilde also offered Bachelor of Science in International Hospitality Management, the first and only transnational international double degree program in the Philippines. This is in partnership with Institut Patel in France. Another innovation began in 2010 when Tumbro Animation Studio, a proposed incubation center by the animation department for young animators and designers, mainly targeting the MMA and AV animation students, was established. They began creating an animated movie about the life of Saint Delasal called Rare. This would be shown in 2013, the first animated feature produced by the Delasal College of Saint Benin. In fact, this studio made this animated feature you're watching right now. In 2011, CSB launched the Brother Miguel Febres Cordero building, home to offices that provide support services to students. This includes artist formation, student organization and publication, and community development offices. It was named after a crippled Ecuadorian LaSalle Saint, known for being a scholar, teacher, and innovative educator. St. Jaime Hilario Center was also established on this year. It was named after the Spanish saint who remained loyal to his faith in Christ to the point of execution during the Spanish Civil War. With this center, Penelope empowers persons with disabilities by providing computer applications training and employment assistance. Last year, we were on the verge of change. The film Mana, directed by Gabriel Fernandez, chairperson of the production design program, premiered before Brother Vic ended his term as president. He handed down the college presidency to tech-savvy Brother Dennis Pagbanwa, FSC. So what's in store for us? In 2014, CSB Hotel will reopen as Hotel Benil, a new enhanced Lasallian brand of service. Add to that the newly opened Andrew Cafe, a gourmet restaurant, and the Miguel Febres Cordero Grounds in Taft Campus. The strategic plan was also presented to the Benilvian community. 2014 marks Benil's starting line as we think inclusivity and innovation. Inclusivity means increasing the number of students who have special learning needs, our PWDs, and... Okay, ibig to sabihin, ladies and gentlemen, ito, uh, that's why, di ba, I think, no, that's why no 2015, pinatag na ang Center for Inclusive Education ng Benilde Union. Or are financially challenged from 22% to 30%. Innovation. 85% of graduating students demonstrate their expertise in their areas of specialization. They should be able to do collaborative and innovative projects that improve the quality of life for everyone, especially for the poor. All of this by 2018. This year is also Benilde's silver anniversary. As we look back and see the milestones of our college, we are convinced that 25 is just the beginning. So... Us for you. How's that for extraordinary? Okay. Okay. So that's why we and Pinil, we need to, that's why this coming August 13, we will celebrate this very important feast called the Feast of St. Pinil Romanson. Okay, but first, before we get to this, news first. Let's have some breaking news. Okay. As of 4 p.m. today, 
the Department of Health reports the total number of COVID-19 cases in the country at 129,913, 67,673 were recoveries, were recovered. And this, this will be maybe be subject to change, but this will be done by the private sector okay, for the COVID-19 cases. So I will read you guys a reflection for today. Jesus took some time apart to be at prayer. His time with God did not close him to the world, but inspired him to go to the help of the troubled disciples. The time I spend at prayer builds me up in my relationship with God and strengthens me to act in God's name. Peter had courage when his eyes were on Jesus, but pondered when he focused on himself and his situation. I asked God to help me to keep Jesus before me. I'm fascinated by that first step of Peter as he climbed over the side of the boat. He was looking at Jesus, not at the water. His mind was charged with Jesus' invitation. Come! So often the way out of depression, fear or anxiety is not a thought or a consideration, but a physical step. I take a risk and find myself strong enough to walk forward keeping my eyes on the Lord. Did Peter really walk in the water? Leave the boat and trip across the waves in the headwind until he took his eyes off. Jesus and sank? It sounds a bit magical or highly dramatic. Readers of the gospel would not even have asked that question. They would believe and say, Peter always walks on the water. They would mean that all of life is putting trust in God and that sinking in life begins with taking eyes off God. We to walk on water all the time. We walk in trust and know that sometimes that trust in God is so real that we can give our lives to Him forever. The hand of God is a human hand. Jesus is reaches out to guide us, send us, support us, all the things a touch of the hand can do. Peter found that also in Jesus, when he took his eyes off the Lord on the water, he began to sing. The Lord then held him close, like Peter, we are always walking on water, putting our trust in Jesus Christ. We trust in Him for protection in the most frightening times of life, like at the hour of death. At times we can do nothing for those we love except place them in the hand of God, knowing that God snubs more them more than we do. Okay, as of yesterday, no 1252 na nga po, pumanaw na po na si, si, uh, si Sister Maria Anunciata Santa Ana, SPC. At uh, dahil dito, sa man nakikipagpanood sa atin ngayon, sama-sama po tayo magkaroon ng kaunting katahimikan ng ilang sandali para magbigay ugay sa kanya. I do ask everyone watching us right now for a moment of silence for Sister uh, for Sister uh, for Sister Anunciata and pray for the internal repose of her soul for one minute. Okay, that's it. Okay, so guys, uh, uh, okay, and uh, yes, I will be back, guys. Mabalik lang ako. Isasend ko lang ito sa yung link. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. Guys, uh, um, mag announcement lang ako. Eh. Okay, mag-a-announcement muna tayo. Announcement or community calendar for August 9 to 15. Uh, kanina po, uh, as 3 p.m. nag executive board meeting. At saka, uh, 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 August 30, mapapanood na for the first time ang Dear HNI. Ang bagong pong host po ay si, binibin, si Ginang Patricia Kapunan. Siyang estudyante ng Benin, Manila din. Okay. 11 a.m. mas sa Thursday, August 13. Bidang sa pagunita ang selebrasyon ng kapistan ni San Benito Romanson. 11 a.m. po yan. Ibrobroadcast natin yan sa Inclu Radio.
and um, because of this, uh, because of that, as part of the Inc. Radio special report, we will. And because of these changes, we will have some adjustments to the programming schedule of Incloradio on August 13. And uh, watch out for that. We will be we're having to have a watch party on that at that time. You Nissan is in Benio Dramanson Feast live from the Manila Cathedral. But first, the exposition at 10:45. So uh, CNN. Okay. Um. Eleven a.m. Feast day mass. Um. So August thirteen, we will broadcast the exposition of the relic of Saint Minute and the feast day mass. And because of these changes. We will have some adjustments in the program schedule. And uh, we will have some changes and we will make sure that we won't have any conflicts with our existing program schedules of Inclu Radio on that day. We will also broadcast the little one. In the little one film showing. At, um, we will can have it at as part of the uh, we will have it as a replay na lang yan. Oh, sige. Anyway, and also um At ang replay ng Feast Day Mass, with, pero may sign language interpreter will be at 6.15 p.m. Pero sa August 13, meron akong programang, program schedule, yung editorial, at 7 to 8.15. Ipapa-replay natin yung The Little One. Okay, and we will be doing some adjustments. Um, at 6 p.m., we will have the little one film showing. Siguro at 6 p.m. Pagkatapos ng report ni Dan Mardayao sa One Inclusion Live Prime Time at the uh, And uh, watch out for that, guys. We will have on we'll, some. We will be some. We will be preempting regular programming to make way for the coverage of the the film showing of the little one film showing and the feast day mass of Saint Benil Romanson at eleven a at ten forty five a.m. And we will brought. We will do a watch party from the C from the Center for the Salian Ministry, and now, yeah. That's all we have for today for the Sunday edition of the One Inclusion Live Weekend 
for Sunday, August 9, 2020. On behalf of all of us at the Inclu Radio and Inclusion Philippines, this is Carlos Kanashi. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a productive week ahead. Have a blessed afternoon and evening to all. May God bless us all. God is good all the time. After all, I will be back this coming Thursday for the editorial segment at 7 to 8.15, Friday for the TIR, and then for weekends, one inclusion live weekend, and we kumustan sa Inkurad. And Danmar Daya will take over again tomorrow for the one inclusion live prime time, Monday to Friday edition. And Lili Sen Akuse will be back again to the open arm segment at 7 to 8.15 p.m. Tuesday. Together, we at Hands Inclusion promote each other by including together for one inclusion forever. Kami sa Inkuradio, mamagkikil tayo sa isa't isa. H&I, God Birth! Coming up next, TV Patrol Weekend, 5.30 p.m.